see the display area. And the wasn't easy car of Danny Gerber. Okay, burnout's completed. Now they will come back. Somebody will guide them back to make sure they're in the right area. Want to get as close to the... Okay, good, he got here. You want to be as close to the right dead nuts on your burnout tracks to get the maximum traction, because traction's everything. The guy behind tells the guy in front, or the gal, in front where to go, and the driver hopefully follows the instructions and they come out in the right place. Oops, don't get run over by your own car. That's been known to happen. Hey, Michael, hey, Don. ADRA driver's meeting now. ADRA driver's meeting now at the ADRA pit, please. ADRA driver's meeting. Get over there, guys. Get your lane assignments and get your bearings. All right, last chance to improve your starting position and who you're going to race. Right now, James Day in the orange car is at the bottom of the heap. He'd have to race number one, Billy Morris. I'm sure he would rather step it up. Remember, though, this is James's only, this is only his third run in this car. I think he's doing very well. Here we go. foot time. That is stellar. 982 for Danny Gerber. That's for the first 60 feet and is a very good indication of how things it's about 75 started degrees out. Here, Don. Nice and cool. That way. Nice breeze. But both cars losing traction. And as uh, Dar said, he kind of felt that the guys would come out for this round basically wanting to show each other who's, show, you know, the other drivers who's boss and stepped up. They're all in the field. They're all going to race today. That's not a problem. But could have been an instance of they wanted to find out what the track would hold. That's sometimes a very valuable thing when you have the opportunity to do so. Now they know, these two teams know, the track won't hold what they just threw at them. So that does, that does not change the order, okay? Moniz 
also runs 222 at a 617. Excuse me, I'm looking at the, the screen. 606 in the left lane, 708 whatever, at 83 miles an hour as Moniz threw out the laundry early. Checking out the racetrack down there. Looks like uh, Bodhi stopped on the track part way down, as benefit, as you know, reflects the fact that he was off the throttle early and didn't have enough speed to coast. I raced here at Tucson. One of the things I like about it is that nice long shutoff area, way way down there. I have to drive my cars off the end. I can't coast. If I coast, I'll stop well short, and that's good. That's a good thing. Plus, there's a sand trap, or actually, I don't know if it's sand or gravel, whatever. You go a ways into that, and there will be a catch net as well. Things have definitely improved uh, as far as driver safety in every area. From the fire suits improving to uh, some of the cars. I, I know that uh, one of our cars uses an ox has a built-in oxygen thing into his helmet, you know, and uh, that's required for many of the cars in some of the classes now, some of the fast classes. And uh, even the suit material has changed considerably the last couple of years. Much more resistant to fire, but yet lighter, and lighter is good. I've got a six-layer suit. I've got a top fuel suit, and it's, the suit alone weighs 18 pounds, so the improvement comes much appreciated. Okay, fire in the hole, next pair. It is Billy Harris, number one, Morris, excuse me, Billy Morris, number one qualifier, 583, 240, top speed of the meet, low ET. And Ryan Hodgkin, Hodgkin, he is currently number four at a 607-193. But that car can step up and bite you any time. The pacemaker car. Five 
577 with a six and 248. Billy Harris right there with him. But he will he went uh, 596, that's two fives in a row, 234. He will remain the number two qualifier with a 583, 240. So talk about stepping up. Ryan did the number there and laid down a fat one for sure. check something right now and see if I can figure out what the temperature is here now. I'm wagering it's around 75 degrees. Well, according to my phone and if it's my phone, it's probably not accurate. It says it's 73 degrees. The humidity, which is a big factor, of course, is 20%. And for many of you people from the coast and from the great northwest and from Canada, that's what you would fondly refer to as bone dry, lip chapping weather. For us, it's pretty much routine this time of year. We got one more car, I believe, will be Bobby Cottrell, Bucky Austin's car. We're holding up as we check the track. Hey, Myron. Down here in Tucson. So most of these drivers, most of these cars running around, give or take, right around 90% nitro. Nitro is at the good guy deal, about 30 bucks a gallon. And they will probably burn Stay in the neighborhood of, of uh, seven to ten gallons. Right per back run. to Chandler. Jim Hughes man, manning the water hose up there, and James is our water box guy on the right side who has so much energy. I'm just really impressed with this young man. He does a great job. The Green Bardar car of Bucky Austin. This car is perfectly capable of laying down a number one qualifying and top speed shot right now, so do not even think of going down to get a drink right now. Just put it out of your mind. After this, we got the final qualifying session for the Western Field Alter, so there's plenty of action going on. Here at Tucson Dragway, the Tucson Dragway Reunion. Thank you for being here with us today. You know, if you really want to experience what a nitro engine is like, is like these guys, all of these guys, fire their car up before each run to make sure there's no leaks and everything's back together. You can go on down and stand close, put your fingers in your ears, and breathe deeply. Hey, Greg. Okay, attention the pits, attention the pits. Junior finals, both categories. To the lanes, please. Junior dragster finals, both categories. To the lanes, please. Okay, the as soon as he stages, the betting windows close. Last minute motor adjustment there. Idle goes down as he starts the second pump. Okay, betting windows are closed. Are we going to see low ET and top speed? Good bet. We'll see what happens. Nope. Well, we got the speed. 584. At 244.87, that's seconds high speed. Still a stout effort for Bobby Cottrell. The 60 foot was off just a little bit from what the car is capable of. Had a 101, I believe it was. No matter. They're solidly in their third. I believe if it's the way it goes, usually they'll race Jeff Bonis, but uh, we'll find out here just a little bit. And that will be coming up a little later on this afternoon. I hope you're going to stick around because it gets really interesting once we get into elimination. Emergency vehicles went back out after them. We'll see what's going on. If you can see that far. You can barely see them under the uh, 
National uh, got finish got line sign. Six o'clock will be the first round for the hey, funny Bill. cars. Plenty of time to go out and enjoy the car show. There's some neat cars. Heck, there's enough neat cars in the front row between the Speed Sport exhibit, which gets bigger every time I walk by, and then down through all of the fabulous nitro display cars, what we call cackle cars, dark mop with Steniger and Eschenbach. Uh, their first car, one of the winningest cars in Arizona history. By the way, I understand the car's for sale. Then the Walton, Cerny, and Moody car, my car, the second car into the fives. Then we go down to the two beautiful, beautiful cars. Uh, All right, he made it off. You can see him cars, there. Cars one and two. Pulling off there. Tommy Allen owns those now or something like that. So they should be pulling off. And then off. you go down a little further, and there is the very pretty iron horse car of Dan Richens. And finally, one of my favorites, actually, even though in some respects it's a little plainer, the all-black with orange striped car that really thunders with a bone 392 of Jay Carpenter. Okay, here we go. I asked him 
he says, would you, are you glad you're a crewman guy? He says, no, I think crewing sucks compared to driving. So it's Middlebrook in the Fiat in the right lane. Mick Williams here on the tire side. And we are go. And uh, Ed had a pretty good run going, 101, 60 foot, but looked like he shut it off about halfway. Again, everybody's going to be in the field. He had a good pass going, though. It looked like it might have been the best of the weekend had he stayed with it. Second call, Junior Dragster finals, both categories, please. Junior Dragsters, final call, all categories, which means both categories are divided by age groups. There's two of them. We need you both up here, please. Junior Dragsters, your finals are forthcoming. Need you up here. Okay, track crew checking everything out down there. Hey, put your hands together for these guys. They love putting on a show for you. You know, think about it, folks. I'm sure that probably 30% eh, of you folks sitting in the grandstands either do drag race or have drag race in the past. So you know there's no way to make money. We do it because we love it. That's all there is to it. And these guys are diehards. They love the altered, short wheelbase, high engine position, squirrely, burly cars. You never know which way they're going to go. Fortunately, Jim has delivered a really good racetrack for us today. And it was just a little too cold last night. Dave, uh, Pat Neal, the Sharps Transmission and Auto Car, out of Tucson, Arizona. Great burnout for Pat. He is currently number seven, has been experiencing some major, major tire shake. His last pass, the preview earlier, that car shook so hard it cracked the transmission case. And that takes some doing. Greg Holman made what is the quickest pass of the event, 664, but that's a little too quick for our club. We normally try to hit around 670, so whether he will tune it down or not, I don't know. Ran 209, and remember, that's a Chevy. You can tell both by looking at the rocker covers and by the, the familiar loping idol of a blown alcohol Chevy. Out of Kingman, Arizona, builds headers for a living. Really, really nice headers. Pat Neal on the door side started on the car the tower side started out as a door car driver and has done very well with this machine. They have won at least two events that I know of. When the car runs great, it's a big mile per hour car too. Let's see what happens here. Final qualifying attempt. Six sixty-eight eight for Pat. Six eighty-four six for Greg. And no... And we didn't get a speed for Pat in the left lane there for some unknown reason, not that it matters. But both cars a little quicker than we want them to be, so it's gonna be interesting the way the ladder works out the first round. But some great performances here in the final round of qualifying for the Western Fuel Alters. Still looking for the Arizona blow dryer, car known as Arizona Thunder. Big Hemi with two huge turbochargers on it, three barrel valves, and enough plumbing. That means the lines and wires and all that stuff to scare anybody. I get a headache just looking at the engine on this car because it's so intricate. Yet these guys have it figured out. Car's very quiet, you notice there's not the big loud noise. But boy, when everything's right, this car makes mega horsepower. Builds up the, builds, spills up the converter, and let's go. Their problem is and has always been traction, because this car just makes gobs and gobs of power. Transferring it to the track, well, that's a different thing. Sometimes the problem's in the converter, sometimes it's the tires. 
Sometimes it's the track, whatever. It's just uh, gives them fits, but they are a very adaptable bunch, very knowledgeable bunch. They have won at least one race here in Tucson and one race somewhere else. So uh, don't you don't ever count this car out. People tend to disregard this car because it's quiet, and that is a big mistake. First pass, they shook the tires very, very hard. Tire shake is an interesting situation that comes when you have, excuse me, when you have, most often when you have too much traction and the tire sticks to the ground and the rubber wads up in front of it and the car starts bouncing on its own tires and it's, it's pretty vicious. Okay, here goes Sheldon. Sheldon Lofgren. Those are numbers they've been looking for. Good pass, guys. Nice job. So that will put him five on the all-time list, but actually puts him number three in qualifying. So we are done with qualifying. Now, for two hours and 15 minutes, we have to sit and wait. And... Well, guys, I'm waiting for him to give us the time for the first round. This should be the sheep car, I believe. Oh, well, there's one more fuel altered. That's what I thought. After the hymn, we'll uh, sign off. We have a couple of license runs here, part of the... Must be 6 o'clock-ish or so oh. for the first round. He's just Maybe running. 5. Okay. He's an exhibitionist. You want to run at oh, night. Oh, okay. I knew he was a gentleman of I'm, I'm leaving you, you know, you can keep that one yourself. Here's the sheep herder car. This is the driver's license. This thing is bad to the bone. Junior's last call. Last call for juniors. Last call for juniors. Test and tune. This is your first call. One and two for test and tune. One and two for test and tune. That is now the lanes closest to the tower, by the way. The sheep are getting set to go. This will undoubtedly on, cement his driver's license. That nitro. last pass was a nice pass. The original body off the sheep are going to just a bit, and he shuts it off to a 7-Eleven 160. Still, I, I wouldn't mind learning at 7-Eleven 160. On you know? nitro, that wasn't an alcohol so, car. You learned at a 7-Eleven. What did you learn? Well, guys, let me wait a moment and see if he tells us when our first round. I did round. not just hear that. Uh, but I'm okay. guessing 5.36. Well, yeah, but I'm ignoring it now that I said it. Tony Dioka coming up next. We've been calling him as a license pass. Actually, he's doing exhibition Don't pass. Don't sound like he's done it, so I'm going to sign off. That. And I'll see you guys uh, here. Earlier today. Uh, I'll do a little post. If I that. hear a time, That's I'll do a little post. Alright, see you in a bit.